And so how did, um, how did you get involved in becoming a music executive? Uh, a friend of mine that I went to high school with flagged me down one day and asked me to help him with some music. Um, and I was kind of looking for like my calling at that moment. Like, I just felt like, you know, like you wake up and you realize you're a loser, like, damn, I'm a loser. <laughs> yeah. And a friend of mine, so I was kind of searching for my, for my purpose and a friend asked me to do music. And I was like, man, this may be what God want me to do. So I just did it like to the best of my ability. And that was 20 years ago. Amazing. And so prior yeah. to that friend approaching you, were you interested in music at all? Not really. I was I was I wanted to be I wanted to be something. I didn't know what it was, but it, I didn't know it was music. Like I just didn't want to I came from nothing, man. I just didn't want to be a loser, bro. I just didn't want to be like, you know, like when you realize like okay, the smart kids went to college, the these kids went the athletes went to do this. I didn't have nothing. So I was working at Delta full time. So I was like actively like speaking life into existence. Like, man, we could be more, we can do more. And I remember pushing wheelchairs and my friend's like, man, what the hell are we supposed to be, man? We pushing chairs. I'm like, man, something, <laughs> yeah. it's something out there for us. And then a guy flagged me down, asked me to help with music. And then man, like they say, the rest is history and here I am. And that guy, the crazy part is that I know it was God cause that guy didn't even make it. Amazing. And so when you say you came from nothing, what does that mean? Uh. Well, you know, it's it's one thing to be poor, but it's a whole nother thing to ha be poor minded. And I grew up in a place where it was poor minded people. Like it was just like everything was low vibrational. You know, it was like expectation. I remember my mom was like trying to sign me up for the army because she was like, if you go to the army, you can you can give me a check every month. Like <laughs> I come from that place where it was like, you know, <laughs> kids kids meant a check, and yeah. you know everybody was poor and. I just didn't want that for myself no more. And I didn't want that for my future kids. And I just knew I didn't want to be a part of that. So, you know, I I come from nothing because I never, I didn't even have nobody tell me I could be anything. Like I, like I've never heard someone in my life say, Ray, you can do this. That's never amazing. in my life. So for me to be where I'm at right now, it's, it's incredible. And it's kind of shocking to everybody in my family. Cause they was like, how the hell did you make it? Like you <laughs> weren't to make it. You didn't go to college. You didn't do nothing. And I'm like, I'm smart though, and I figure people out. So did you uh, did you graduate high school? Yeah, I graduated high school. But during high, high school, school, no teacher told you you can do what you want. I had one teacher tell me, I had one thing a teacher told me I could be, it, and it was a comedian. Like she used to say, "You should be a comedian, uh, Mrs. Jobs." I always wanted to look for it because it meant a lot because no one saw me, and she was like, "You should be a comedian." And she went as far as saying, "If you write down some jokes, I'll take you myself." You know, teachers can tell when a kid is not being invested in. Right. Like I'll take you myself to the uh, uh, open mics if you do it. But I was just scared. I didn't think that I I could I could have been a comedian. But outside of that, nah, amazing. Nothing. And Crazy. so, were you raised by your father and mother, or just mother? Well, my mother. And my father, when my father was in and out of prison, um, my father was a great man. He just had addiction problems and he couldn't get past it. So I was raised by my mother, but I was raised in a house where, you know, I was told my father ain't shit. I ain't shit, shit like that. Like I, I was told all that my whole life. So, but my father was my dog. Like I love my dad. Like he was the nicest man I've ever met in my life. You know, he just had shit he was dealing with. So, right. I don't say I wasn't raised without him because I do have his influence in me. And yeah. but he wasn't in the house after I hit like seven, eight years old. He was gone. Amazing. And so is he still living or it's not like he's not? Oh, he living? passed away. He passed away March 3rd, 2002. Amazing. And so have you forgiven your mother for in, uh, imposing her will Absol on you like that? Absolutely. I I I I it's it's weird because I have a lot of family. Uh the family drama comes from my family getting mad that I still take care of my mother and give her everything she wants. And my family is always like, you know, my mother now is like, my son, look at my son, look at my son. And my family's like, you didn't even love him when he was a kid. Stop acting like you was the mother of the year. <laughs> but, you know, my mother was 24 with three kids on welfare, food stamps, and the projects. Like, nobody spoke life into her. So I have to give her grace. So you forgave her for what she did to you? Absolutely. Did I, you tell I, her I that? Not only did I forgive her, I understood what she did to me. I understood why she did it, and I forgave her then. And did you tell her you forgive her for what she's done to you? Of course. She hates when I talk about her stuff, though. She, like, if I do, because she became a different person. Like, I willed my mother to become a different person. Like, I, like, 
it could be a movie what I had to do with my mother to show her she needs to be a different person. Amazing. And yeah. so, um, so now you're a businessman, and you said that you are. Did she say you're a Christian? Yeah, yeah, I believe in. God. I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know if I would say I'm a Christian. I, the closest that I would say I'm to religion is being a Christian, because I do believe in God, and I was raised in a Catholic household. But um, I'm more of like, I'm just not really into religion. I'm I'm not really into it like that because I right. feel like it's it divides us. And right now we need each other more than ever, or to at least understand each other. You know what I mean? So I try my best not to buy into it. And so you you do believe in God. How do you know you believe in God? My whole life is a manifestation of my belief in God. My whole life, like like when you when you come from a place where you hear people don't believe in you, people don't tell you like, and then you say you're gonna go for it. I never forget. My father died March third, two thousand two. I was working at Delta. No, I, I okay. I was working at Delta, and then September eleventh happened. And when September eleventh happened, remember the airlines. The airline industry kind of crashed. Right. So Delta basically told employees, don't come to work, take a year off, two years off, five years <laughs> off. So I was like, well, maybe this is God's sign of saying, go, you know, go chase your dream. Because by this time I was kind of like around it and I've been approached. So I'm working at Delta. My father dies March 3rd, 2002. Delta called me back to work April 1st. Like, look, we're sorry your dad died. But you got to come to work. And I remember and I remember when I went to work, I, I used to I was driving tugs. So, you know, I was the guy that when you going through Atlanta and you going from New York to Mississippi, I'm the guy that had to get your bag from one plane to the other. That was right. my job. Yeah. And I remember I remember thinking, you know, because when my father died, you know, it was like it's a whole lot of stuff around that that that's irrelevant right now. Like just little stuff like I thought he had an insurance policy. He didn't. So I was actually glad he didn't because I was like. I'm going to get my own money for myself. I don't want to make money for my father's death. Yeah. And he died. And I remember going back to work and I'm working at Delta. And I remember for some reason, it was like, it just hit me. I was like, man, if Bill Cosby was my father, would people be telling me to go work for Delta? Or would people be like, why are you working for Delta? Your dad's Bill Cosby. And then it hit me like, man, the expectations of the world, the, the expectations the world have of you is usually based on who your father is, right? Whether he's a crackhead in jail or he's a, whatever it is. And I just remember saying, I, and I went in my, my, my supervisor office and I quit that day. Right and on. I remember when I quit, I called my mother and she was like, you stupid. You don't have, you don't have no talent. You ain't going to be nothing. Why would you quit? You're going to top out. I never did. She said, you would have made $25 an hour in 10 years. I made more money. If I would have stayed at Delta right now, and 2002, when I quit, to 2023, I made more money this year than I would have made if I, the whole time I was at Delta. Yeah. Amazing. So for, me, it's like, so for me, it's one of them things where it's like, it was just me and God on my mission. And it was like, you know, and I believe that God wants to bless us, but we have to show him that we want it. Yeah. Right? So for me, you know, a lot of people can pray, but it's not just about praying. It's about praying and put some action behind them prayers. And that's what I did. I put some action behind it. And then slowly and, and, and surely I started getting there. And I ended up way further than I ever imagined. Do you have you know anger? I mean? Nah. You have I don't have anger. I, I, I don't have anger for my mother because, like I said, once I, I forgive, I have to let go. Yeah. And I forgave her. And we, my mother's my best. Like we so I was just on FaceTime with her laughing with it just now. Me and my mother are so tight now, but my mother is who she always wanted to be because. Now she has the freedom to be that. You know, she hasn't worked in 15 years. You know, she lives in a mansion. I pay for everything. So now she has a chance to be it. But, you know, she was trying to figure it out. So I was, I understand why she wasn't happy in life. I I wouldn't have kids if I was her, by the way. Like, so it's not like <laughs> I wasn't there. I just wouldn't have kids until, like, by the time, like, I always tell people, I'm like, when I came home as a newborn, we we caught a cab and went home to the projects. When my son came home, 15 years ago, my son came home to a, a house. Yeah. I had six figures in the bank when little Raymond came home. So, you know, of course I'm a better father. I have money in the bank. I can, I can focus rather than trying to figure out how to keep the lights on. So I, I do my best to give my mother grace and give people like her grace because, and they don't know no better. Like they, my mom didn't know what generational wealth was. Right. Like that wasn't even like that. Like my mom, mom and my mom's head, the only way to win the lottery is the, it, the only way to get rich is to hit the lottery. And so do you have perfect peace? 
Uh, I'm not gonna say perfect peace with well with my family. Yes. Um, I mean within yourself. Yes. I, the, I, it's funny because I just interviewed somebody who was going through like a whole lot of drama, and I was like, man, you need to learn a serenity prayer. So anytime I'm like trying to figure life out, I go to the serenity prayer. Like I don't have no control over this. Yeah. Over this. So I'm either gonna be happy or be mad, but it doesn't. Me, my happiness or my anger doesn't change the fact that that happened. Right. So I do have a lot of peace. Amazing. And, you know, and, so, uh, and I'm also very, I'm also very cautious about what I do. So I don't really put myself in a position to get in trouble like that. Right on. And so yeah. you sound like, and I don't know, I'm gonna ask people this, but it sounds like you're rich. I am. Like a white man. I'm rich like a black man. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what a white man is rich. I got I got white people that come to my house and fix my stuff. So I can't say every white man I know is rich. I got white people that work for me. So, but I, I am rich though. I, you can say that. I'm 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 I, I've been a multimillionaire for a while now. Really? Yeah. And what is that like to be a multimillionaire? It's not fun when nobody around you has money. I know because everybody want your money, right? Everybody wants your money, yeah. and 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 not only that, they don't. It's not, I don't mind people wanting money. I get it because I was once that person, but it's like, you got to want, you got to earn your seat at the table. Yeah. And sometimes people think because they knew you, that means that they seat was at the table. No, you're in my life, but that doesn't mean you're at the table when the shit, money get broken up. So it is fun. Um, You know, it is good to look at your bank account and see, you know, two commas. That's great. You know, but my biggest thing now is I don't want to lose it. So I work harder than I ever work now. Like, <laughs> I don't want to go. I don't want to go back to where I was. I, that's just, that's my biggest nightmare. Really? I understand yeah. that. That now that you got it, you have to worry about losing it. Yes. What a mess. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 